Hello and welcome to REFM's Excel for Real Estate Bootcamp video tutorial. Over the course of the next two hours, you will learn basic and advanced techniques and formulas in Microsoft Excel and how they apply specifically to real estate analysis. The content in this tutorial is progressive, but note that you are able to navigate to any particular section of the video at any time using the chapter markers on the left hand side of this video window. Let's get started by flipping to the arithmetic tab of the Excel file and talking about some formatting conventions that we will observe throughout this tutorial. As you can see, some of the numeric values on this tab are formatted in bold blue type, while others are simply in black type of standard thickness. As a rule, we always format our assumptions or inputs in this bold blue type so that we can easily and quickly identify which numeric values on a spreadsheet tab are inputs and by default which are not inputs. If a numeric value is not an input then it is a formula based output. To see the difference between the contents of an input cell and a formula based output cell you simply select the cell you wish to inspect and either double click in the cell or use the F2 button to make the contents of the cell visible. In the case of an input, all you see is the numeric value itself in the cell as well as in the formula bar above. In the case of a formula based output, you will see the actual formula that resides within the cell. In the case of the addition formula here in cell G5, you see the cell coordinate labels of the three cells that are being added to one another and you note that they are color coded to correspond with the color of the boxes that automatically appeared around their respective cells. Arithmetic in Excel is very straightforward once you understand how to construct a formula. We will start all of our formulas with the equal sign. In the case of cell G5 which contains the formula to add cells D5, E5, and F5, we simply place the addition operator the plus sign in between the cell coordinate labels without any spaces and hit the enter key once we have finished constructing the formula. As shown here in cell G6, an alternative to adding the numbers individually is to use the sum function. The sum function works by first typing in the equal sign, then the letters SUM, and then open parentheses. Once you have typed in the formula name and then the open parentheses, Excel brings up a generic version of the formula beneath the cell, which tells you how the formula is to be constructed. As shown in the generic version of this formula, the range of cells you wish to add can be captured by putting a comma in between the cells themselves, or alternatively, you can either type a colon in between the first and last cell you wish to sum, or simply select the entire range with your mouse. The formula is then completed by typing a close parenthesis and then hitting the enter key. Subtraction can be performed by typing the negative sign in between individual cells you wish to subtract from one another. Additionally, you can perform subtraction by using the sum formula if that is a more efficient way of performing the operation on several numbers. Multiplication is straightforward using the asterisk which you get by hitting the shift key and the number 8 as the multiplication operator and division is also very straightforward using the forward slash as the division operator. Next let's take a look at exponentiation. Exponentiation is important because it's often used to grow a base rent value by a constant growth rate over multiple periods. Exponentiation is performed by using the caret on top of the number 6 key, which you produce by hitting Shift 6. The value that comes before the caret is the base, and the number after the caret is the exponent itself. Excel observes the order of operations of arithmetic that some refer to through the mnemonic device, Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally, which orders operations as parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, and lastly, addition and subtraction. 
This is shown here in cell G19, whose formula is also written out as text in cell G21 below. While we are looking at this longer formula, we want to point out to you that Excel has a function that allows you to evaluate formulas that can be helpful in understanding how these longer formulas are put together. To view the function, click on the cell that houses the formula you wish to evaluate, and then select the Formulas tab, and then click on the Evaluate Formula button. This will bring up a dialog box that shows the entire formula, and by clicking the Evaluate button, you can view how the value changes as the order of operations are observed and calculations are performed. The next function to learn is rounding, which can apply to real estate in the instance of a developer who knows what the total rentable square footage of an apartment building will be, as well as the average square footage of each unit type, but doesn't yet know the exact number of total units in the building. The developer will assume a unit mix of the various unit types that will allow him or her to consume all of the rentable square footage but they understand that their final unit count cannot contain any partial units. To see how Excel can remedy this problem, let's take a look below. Excel provides us with three main ways to round, and also ways to round to a user-specified significant digit. The first is the straight round function, which is enabled simply by typing equals round and then an open parentheses sign. As shown in the generic formula, the first variable you place in the formula is the value you wish to round, and then the number of digits to which you would like the value rounded. If you enter zero, the number is rounded to the ones place. If you enter a positive number, the number of digits to which Excel rounds is the specified number of digits after the decimal place. And if you enter a negative number, the number is rounded to the specified place before the decimal point. The same conventions apply to the round up and round down functions as shown here. In the example above, the round down feature can be used to make sure that the final unit count does not include any partial units since there is no such thing as a partial apartment unit. The elimination of this partial unit allows the developer to adjust for a slightly different unit layout for one or more units in order to consume the space that would have been allocated to that partial unit. Next let's move down to the exercise. Write the formulas in the table here and then check your answers in the solutions box below. Once you are done, flip to the next tab. Excel allows you to get basic statistical measures of data sets quickly and easily. An example of how statistics can be applied to real estate analysis is for the calculation of the average square footage of the apartment units in an existing building and the calculation of the average rents on a per square foot basis. The first statistics function we will review is the maximum function. To find the maximum of a series of values, you use the max formula and define the range of values you wish to compare. To find the minimum value, you use the min formula. To find the average value, you use the average formula. And to find the median value, you use the median formula. Perform the exercise below and then check your answers against the solutions box. When you are done, flip to the next tab.